A very good evening to you and welcome to the launch. You've waited, I waited. I think this is the <laughs> third time myself and Catherine have been scheduled to do this. Would you believe that the last two times I'm here with the lovely Catherine Sturrock. Hello, Hello, my darling. Hello. Third time Hello. lucky How are you? Third, third time charm. lucky. Yes, we have been waiting a very long time. And for I do this. believe it was you and me that were scheduled to it, be together. It was. And then it got cancelled. It was. Then we got it was. put together and, again. Uh, we can only apologise, but you know what? Logistics and exactly. things yes. that are happening are in the world right now just exactly. sometimes it's cause supply hiccups. chain, etc. It is. Et but it's worth the wait it because we is. have for you the new Zuri designs. Tell me about this one day special then, Catherine. Oh, do you know, I absolutely love these. Now, we've got the tree house there. Yep. Now, it is, this is such a detailed oh, image. Look at wow, this. Wow. This is absolutely beautiful. Now, you could, you could argue this could be a number of things. Is it a fairy house? Yes. Is it an enchanted house? Mm. Is it oriental? Mm. Oh, yes, it has that is it a blossom? fantasy? Yes. Yeah, you know, this could be whatever you want it to be. It could be a very posh tree house that's been built in somebody's garden. I wish I'd had one like that when I was um, little. Me too. Uh, in fact, I'd like one like that now. This is absolutely beautiful. This is a big mould as well. Oh, absolutely it? huge. I mean, look at that in comparison to my it's hand. Gorgeous, it's gorgeous, isn't huge, it? Isn't yeah. it? It's a nice deep mould, this one as well. So, you, you know, you've got lots of detail in there yes. with the, the shrubbery or the trees, with the leaves there, you've got the trunk, you've got all that detail in the little roofs oh. and the windows as well. You know, little balconies on there. This is a good one, actually, for breaking things down as well. If you look at the trees or the leaves in the trees, yeah. you can see individual little bushes and hedges there as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Yes. So think about breaking this down. I always say this about Zuri. It's beautiful to see the finished image. It's beautiful to see the whole design. But look at what else you can achieve there. Take the trunk out of there mm. and don't have the treehouse at all. You know, use those those yes. trees and branches Leading in a different way. A, yes, it could, you can make a village out of it. Just re repetition of you know, you the could, trees yeah. and the... Uh, the house is there. Amazing. So are we getting both, Catherine? You're getting oh, both of these, word. yeah. Now, we also get the butterfly fane. Now, we've had the butterfly lady. This one is completely different. Oh, wow. It, look at the detail oh, on this one. This is stunning terrific. again. I mean, she's got proper antennae. She's got, um, you know, almost those bug's eyes on her head there. Yes. She's got those beautiful sleeves and that dress. And again, just take the wings out of this one. Use the butterfly wings and don't use the whole of the image again. Take the skirt out of this. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'll wait for demonstration. I've just spotted something else that I didn't even spot before, which I'm going to come back to at demonstration because I know, I think already, one or two of the demonstrations I've got planned, I may not be able to do this hour, so I've just spotted something that I think could be quite useful with that mould, so I'm keeping She's that incredible. secret for okay. now. OK, I'm dying to know, but we shall unfold as time <laughs> goes on. I will say, though, that 30% of the stock has gone. I mean, it's flying off the shelves. Please check out your baskets ASAP. They say it be because I just don't want you to miss out. 874302. Now, equally <laughs> as majestic, majestic, I should say, this is stunning, Catherine. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, this is the most ornate elephant I have ever seen. Now, this one I've cast in resin, and it was actually, if you turn that around, <gasps> yes, uh, Fiona, you you'll see yeah. the colour that I cast it. That's Ooh. how it started. So it's the detail in the moulds that enables you to bring all that wow. wonderful detail and colour out. I've used uh, Viva Decor there. We do have some paints on the show, but I tend to keep going back to my Viva Decor waxes. They're not really wax, they're water-based. Right. Uh, and that's done entirely with that, and anybody can achieve that. There's nothing sort of very technical about that at all. I will show you how to colour these up during the shows as well. That is absolutely beautiful. Please don't wait on this one. Half the stock's already gone. We will enjoy Catherine's demonstration, but I just don't want you to rest on your laurels because what happens is by the time I get down to the end of the counter, it's gone. So <laughs> please, uh, can I impress upon you not... I mean, just look at that. The detail, Catherine, is I know. breathtaking. I know. Do you know, so many people ask us how you, how you get the detail on these images that we're seeing. These are the images that are on the packaging. When you get yeah. the moulds, they're on the packaging. And so many people want to replicate that. I will tell you, these are... Three 3D graphic images, but you can so easily replicate exactly what you're seeing on the packaging there, very easily with your clays, with your resin and just a little bit of paint or gilding wax. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to mention one more new one because uh, we've got loads of the others, the favourites that are back, simply because I've got to see a demo with an elephant before he's gone. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's going to be gone, Catherine. Um, the minstrel love, I mean, this tells a thousand stories, doesn't it? It's it really exquisite. does. Yeah, and this <gasps> is a really good size mould again. I mean, straight where you think of Romeo and Juliet, don't you? But there 
there. Look at the detail in the wing. That wing again, take that away, use that in a different mm. way. Use that with the steam pole. The, yeah. the feathers on top of, of the gentleman's hat there. Look at the sleeves, the folds in the sleeves. They're absolutely beautiful. It's like a fairy tale, it isn't really it? It really is. I mean, they're obviously very much in love, aren't they? Oh, completely. I mean, it could be, like you said, that could be a cloak of feathers, that could be Carabosses feathers. Yeah. I mean, it's just amazing, isn't it? Beautiful. Fairy tale magic, that. And the detail, phenomenal. £19.99, 090786. 40% of uh, Minster I Love has actually gone. Amazing. 40% has already gone. I just want to show you some images from the design team and then we'll join Catherine straight away simply because I know all these brand news are flying out. Look at that. Is that a necklace they've made kind of thing? Do you know, I've got to say a massive thank you to the design team. Um, there's, there's only one UK design team member, that's Sylvia Allen. And thank you, Sylvia, because oh, yes. we'll see some of yes. Sylvia's pictures as well. Amazing. But we've got Lynette, we've got Nelly, we've got uh, Nicole. Um, I'm trying to think of the other lady's name. Oh, no, I don't say I've missed one out. These are beautiful. Stunning. Some of them, these have names on as well, so you can see the names on them. And everybody's got their own way of working with these. Ooh. So I think it's um, Nelly is kind of on the dark side of art. Oh, right. That's okay. how she describes herself. Ooh. But then you've got those. Oh, Kriya's the other one. Then, of course, um, you've got those that like the colour as well, or the softer colours. So you get a really nice mix of the so different designs. So that's one of Sylvia's that we're looking at right now. Catherine, 80% of the elephants gone. 80%. Please, please, please check out your baskets. I don't want you to miss out. Um, do you want to start with the elephant before he goes, Catherine? I don't know what you want to do. I don't want to interfere with your demonstrations. He's going to be gone. <laughs> we, we can, we can see. Whatever where you we want go to do, my it. darling. Okay. But I just know he's, he's going to be gone. Okay, right. Okay. There. <laughs> we'll, we'll start looking at the elephant then, because um, you've got one of my cousins there. That's with the resin as well. Yes. Now I've, I've got some of the air dry clay. I normally start with the air dry clay. Um, I'm just going to check. I've got a spare elephant mold because one of them's got resin in. Right, we have. We've got one here. So, for those that, of course, are new to this, and we, we also have to cater for those that have just joined us or haven't bought the moulds before, they haven't um, even seen Zuri before. Yeah. So we've got to try and cater for every, everyone. So I'm going to start with the air dry clay, which I normally do, and we're going to move on to the resin as well. Now, if you're brand new to the moulds and you're not used to working with the clay, we do have the Hearty Soft on again, which is my go-to clay. Yeah. Now, it's consumable, so maybe you want to restock on that as well. We normally have the double pack i hope we do this time because you save more oh no we're limited stock on update. the elephant everybody but you know what this is a good demonstration anyway Catherine, okay. because simply because it's what we do with with the air drive for all of the moles isn't yeah. it so we get to know the moles if we're new as well it we? is and i'm because i'm using the clay i think i'm allowed to continue with this mold yes yeah. okay so i am going to talk through the different clays so the hearty soft is the lightweight clay now what i normally do is roll that out and let the air get to the surface i did this about 10 minutes before we went live okay. because if you take it straight from the pack it can be too sticky oh right another good tip is to dust with corn flour oh yeah without any excess that will help when i'm at home i don't do this i'll let the clay dry a little bit more but you know tv and all that we don't have time to sort of wait around when you take the clay from the pack always condition it by conditioning it i just mean stretch it you will find that it's quite fibrous and it will break apart quite easily the more that you stretch it the more malleable it will be now, Catherine, I'm so sorry, but you, obviously you're going to continue anyway, but the elephant is now technically sold out. Oh, no. Check out your baskets if you popped him in there, because I will tell everybody if any bounce back, because I know he's in huge demand, three, four, four, six, four, two. I'm going to bring the details for that hearty clay, because you do get okay. a pack, yeah. as Catherine said. And this is 400 grams in total. Uh, we've got the whites there, but I, I know we do some, we can mix colours into these, Oh, can't yes. We? You can get the coloured hearty as well that's available, but you can also mix in your pigments. I would suggest use a, a highly pigmented water-based dye. Gel food colouring is one of my all-time favourite things to mix into this. It just works brilliantly and you need such a small amount. I wouldn't suggest mixing acrylic paint into the clay. There's the odd time that I do if it's the tiniest bit, but I tend to try and avoid that right. because it makes the consistency of the clay change mm. it makes it go very sticky and it oh. kind of weakens it a little bit when oh, it's dry right. as well so right. that's one that i would say Don't try and avoid try and avoid that yeah one. so your dyes your water-based dyes your pigments and things like that yeah, yeah. Do, do we we sell the air dry in the black as well do we do we, we do with well? the colors we yeah. have uh we have a pick and mix i believe oh, for right. the colors have a look on the website yeah, yeah. we yeah, might fantastic. have a little look at those throughout the shows at 
some point. I don't know if it'll be this hour, but uh, at some point we will. Right, so back to the white hearty. Now, the majority of people do tend to just go straight in with the white. You can, of course, if you want to, to start with a black base and you're working with air dry clay, I would suggest going for the black hearty clay in that case, because if you try and mix black into your white clay, you're always going to get gray. Right. It's the same if you want a true red. If you mix red into your white clay, you're always going to get a pink. Yes, yeah. you can change the tone, you can change the shade, but you're still going to get pink. So there are certain colors, I would say, if you're definitely sticking to the air dry clay, make sure that you've stuck up on those. I mean, black and white, I think, are probably the, the main colors that we'll use for the bases or, the, you know, the castings that we do, first of all, and then the color is applied in other ways with paints yeah. and waxes and things. So lots of options. Yeah. Now, I've purposely put far too much clay in here just to show for anybody that hasn't seen it before, if you go in with too much, it doesn't matter because you can easily remove it. The same goes for if you don't put enough clay in, you can easily top it up. You don't have to go with one big lump of clay. You can sort of add little bits as you go. Now, what I'm doing here is using a rolling pin because I want mm. to really compact that clay down because mm. there's so much detail yeah. in there. Okay, so I'm really pushing down. And now this does something else as well. It doesn't just compact it. You can also see where I've got excess clay. Yeah. You can actually see where it's overhanging. So there I can see where to remove. And all I need to do is with a fingertip or a thumb, just scrape away. So if I didn't have enough, because my director's just asked this, it's a really good question, and you were adding another dob in it. Yeah. Would that not sort of crack? Would it? I mean, a dibby dob if you're stuffing another bit in there because you hadn't put enough in. Would it, it, would it, it wouldn't as long as you compact the clay down right. and really squash it down. If you don't you can... push it in far enough, you may see where you've added that in. Oh. So always make sure. Do you know? I was going to say always make sure you fill the mould completely to the top. So when you go over with the rolling pin, you can see that you have totally filled it. There are odd occasions where I will go against that rule. Mm. And if I'm going to do that, I'll do it in demo and I'll explain why right, I've done that. Okay. But generally, I will just sort of fill it up. I should mention as well, forgive me, that the uh, there's a 14-day delay with the clay. Seven, seven day, what did I get the four? I'm I don't know what I'm on about. Uh, there, there is a, well, let's start that again. With the clay, <laughs> there is a seven day delay, which means it will be dispatched on the 14th. That's where I was going with that. That's where I got 14 from, so I do apologise. <laughs> seven day delay dispatched on the 14th. Okay. Right. Oh, that is Mother's Day, isn't yes, it? it is. yes, Sunday. Sunday yeah. yeah. Right. Now, if you ever find that when you work with your mould and you want to demould the clay, and I always say this as well, and the clay is just stretching or splitting in an area, it just means that your clay is too wet. Oh. You're not doing anything wrong. Right. It's not the mould. Yeah. It's simply that the clay is too wet. And that has happened to me live on air sometimes as well. You what know, you sometimes. Well, there's a couple of things you can do. You can eat. You can try and get it out. And if you stretch it, just roll it up and go again. Yeah. Or you can allow the clay to dry a little bit in the mould. But I will say, I tend not to do that very often because if the clay is in the mould and you're letting the air get to it, it's getting to the surface, but yeah. not deep down into the mould. Oh. So it's quicker to take the clay out, roll it out as I did do beforehand, and let the air get to the surface and then go back into the mould oh, with it. Okay. At the end of the day, it is clay. Mm. Now, I can see there's a little sticking point there. It's still a little bit wet, this one, but I'm just going to... I'm going to force this one out just so you can see the detail on this one. You can see where it's left a little bit in there. But I want to show you the difference between the clays and the resin as well. Yeah. Now, the oh. amount of detail in there is just incredible. It really is. But with the air dry clay, there is a little bit of shrinkage on it. Uh, yes, it's about 7%, which yeah. isn't a lot at all, but you would notice a difference if you compared it with a resin piece and an air dry clay piece. Saying that, you will not lose any of that detail no. whatsoever, and it's super lightweight. So if you want to use this on your cards or your lighter projects, have your posting, then this is absolutely ideal. And then you can work with so many different mediums on top of that. So that's one of the clays covered for now. Um, I'm going to let you, I think you might have an update to do, Fiona, before I, I do. move on to something I else. Thank you, Catherine. Yes, I do. I want to give everybody time to check out because that elephant is now sold out. We're going to show you how to become a Freedom Club member and then have the quickest recaps. Have you heard of Achanda Freedom? Did you know that as a Achanda Freedom member, you could be making savings on every order you place? For just £5.97 a month, you will benefit from selected Freedom member discounts and complimentary standard delivery on every order you place. 
You will also receive our exclusive Achanda Freedom Members badge, regular newsletters, giveaways and crafty updates. If you shop with Achanda more than twice a month, then Freedom is for you. Don't forget, your Freedom membership is flexible, so you can pause it if you're going away or you can cancel it at any time. So what are you waiting for? Give us a call or head to the website, quoting item number 888888 and join Hachanda Freedom today. Now, you are loving the Zuri Moles. I think you crashed our website. Um, I do apologise. We know we've got a few problems there. We are getting it sorted. So I do apologise. If you can ring through and speak to us, even better. We'll be with you as quick as we can. Just uh, make sure, you know, you check out those baskets as and when you can. Now, we're talking about the one-day special with the Treehouse and the Butterfly Face Silicon Moles. Please contact us via phone lines. I know it's busy, but uh, our website has officially crashed because we've been waiting so long for these gorgeous Zuri moles. Now, these are food safe as well, aren't they? Because we often get not even that. mentioned that yet. They're no. not just food safe. They're heat proof up to 270 degrees Ooh. centigrade, that yeah. is, to about minus 70. So if you want to put Oof. things in the freezer, if you want to freeze ice cream or oh. chocolate or something and put it in the freezer, Fantastic. then they will go in the freezer as well. But yes, they, they carry a very high certification for food. Yes. So you've got no problem with fondants. Um, I'm still waiting for that show that I keep being promised where we're going to do edibles, which oh, I'd love yes. to do. Because Make sure to see I'm on these on cupcakes and cakes and using <laughs> chocolate. Oh. All we yeah. say is perhaps get your separate yeah. mould for your food grade stuff and have a different mould, obviously, yeah. for your air dry clay. Yeah. We, we don't want to be mixing that with our icing, do we? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, perfect. Right, OK, so I'm, I'm going to put the elephant to one side because I know we're sold out of it. And I'm still going to continue with clay at the moment because I do want to try and touch on a couple of other things. Yeah. Um, and I think we've already sold out one of the moulds I was going to demo with this hour. And it's not the elephant, it's something else. I've got the butterfly fay here. And we have another clay, and a lot of you have bought this in the past, but oh. I, it's very rare I get a chance to demo with it properly. Okay. And this is the Medina. This is an air dry polymer clay. Now, polymer clay is, means polymer is plastic. Okay. So, I mean, it's kind of, some people would call this a resin clay. It is air dry. Yeah. Now, normally with polymer clay, you oven bake it. You certainly don't need to put this one in the oven. Oh. It takes longer to dry than the, the hearty. Yeah. But there's a good reason for that. If I bring in. Um, we've got the tree house here, actually. Okay, I think, I don't know if you've got another update. I, I am. <laughs> I'm so sorry, because I hate interrupting you, Catherine, but um, we are trying to work out our gremlins, because I know you've, you've paid attention to me, and now you're trying to check out, bless you, and uh, because of our website, you, you're not, uh, you haven't got the ability, so obviously we don't want you to lose what's in your baskets. We are working on it. Obviously, we want you to have your product. We want you to have it tonight, so um, please bear with us. We are working on it. We're aware. I know you get in touch, and I know it's very frustrating, and I cannot apologise enough, but we're aware of it. So we're aiming to get that sorted as soon as we can, and I'll, I'll keep giving you updates as we go through. But we might as well listen to our gorgeous Catherine and see what we can do with our clays and our <laughs> resins. And our oh, dear. Moles, I know. Oh, dear. We'll well, yeah, it is. I know. I'm so sorry, everybody. It is very frustrating for you, but please bear with us. Now, I'm just holding this one. There's absolutely no colour on there at all. This is the tree house. Now, that now, looks oriental in it that It um, really does, colour. doesn't it? Ivory but the nice kind of. thing about the Medina clay is not only is it air dry, it's, a little, it's heavier than the hearty. Oh. It's not particularly heavy, but it is heavier than the hearty. Yeah. This is almost unbreakable, so once it's set, you Ooh, can wow. literally bend it, and I'm really bending that look. You are. And this is waterproof, weatherproof. So this would go outside Ooh. as well. Oh, wow. Whereas your you hearty won't because it's <gasps> porous, it's going to soak in the moisture. And that water, so this yeah. time, you know, you can put oh, these outside if you want to go with the Medina. And your pots. Yeah, very different to work with compared to the hearty. Uh, we've got the minstrel here as well, which is also done in the Medina. Now, this, this one was cured quite some time ago. <gasps> I mean, it's still quite flexible. You can see I can bend that. But when this was first taken out of the mould back in January, when I thought I was prepping for the, for the yeah. launch, when you take this out of the mould, it's really, really malleable. So if you want to fix it around a, a vase or a oh, pot wow. or shape it, you can do. Put that in position, totally weatherproof. What would you glue it with? Do you know what? If you're using it outside, I would suggest 
I normally like to try and give the sales to a channel, but I'm not on this, this case because I would go to uh, a DIY store and buy some, you know, you get the tubes that are like silicon tubes, but not yeah. silicon. Go for an adhesive that will stick stone, brick, that sort oh, of yes, thing. Oh, yes, I've done that when my dog's adhesive. nose fell off. Yeah. Yeah. And use something like that if you're yeah. going to put this outside because if you go with a regular glue, you will find that the weather will get to it and it will fall yeah. off. Okay. If you're putting it inside, mm -hmm. I would say a really good PVA or a gel medium, a heavy Ooh, body gel yeah, medium. Okay. You will see me using a hot glue gun a lot, which is great because it's quick, it's a quick grab, but it's not as permanent as some of the other bonding materials. Right. So I tend to use it for speed here yes, when I'm demoing. Right. Okay, so now if you're working with the Medina, I'm just going to show you this because this it is, is very, very different to work before. with. Yeah, it's, as I say, it's heavier than the hearty. It looks, it says on the packet it's white. I wouldn't say it is white. I'd say it's kind of a creamy colour. Definitely kind of yeah, a creamy. It is, isn't it? Definitely. When it dries, when it cures, it goes slightly darker. If I put those two together, you yeah. can see the difference. Oh, yeah. Okay. But you can mix colour directly into this, but not oh. water-based, because right. this is a polymer, polymer. an air-dried polymer. Um, you want to use a gouache or an oil paint would be the best thing oh. to mix into there. But, of oh, course, once this is dry then you can use it and paint on top of it with all your regular mediums. Okay, so with everything that I do, I tend to condition. So this is a lot firmer, but it's not yeah, particularly difficult to work no. with. I don't it's know how I get so much paint on my fingers before I've even used paint, you know. Uh, but I do want to warm this up a little bit. Right. Now, with the air dry clay, I do say release it from the mould before it dries. Don't leave it in there to dry. With this... I've done it both ways. I have put it into the mould and released it straight away, or I have let it dry in the mould. If you're really struggling, let it dry in the mould itself. Wow. Now, I'm going to use the Butterfly Fay for this. Cornflower. And, yeah, I'm going yeah. to go with some cornflower, but I'm just going to get a smaller brush because what I'm going to do, I'm going to paint with the cornflower or dust with the cornflower. Can you use a normal flower? Um, I wouldn't use a normal flower because if you get moisture into normal flour, it's going oh, to go yeah, like right. glue. Oh, yeah, paste, won't we? Yeah, it'll go like glue. You can use talcum powder. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, rather than filling the whole of the mould, I'm just going to go into the area where the main body is. Mm. Okay. So, and I'm not actually going to release this. This is going to be part of a demonstration. Now, it might take a little bit of time when you're at home to do this properly. I'm just kind of rushing it ahead a little bit. I might tidy this up later because it will be a two-part demonstration. Mm. So I'm trying to create an area that is filled in with the clay where the body itself is. Now, this is quite an easy one to see where the body is. You can see the wings beautifully at the side there. Yeah. I am going to do the skirt. So, And you can see here I am going into the mould with separate bits of clay. Mm. There's some very, very fine detail in this one. Gosh, so I'm going to come back to that. If you get really fine details, sometimes what I do is I roll little sausages just so I shape it a bit more and then work that way. Those skirty layers are amazing. I'm they really are, aren't they? Feel here. I don't They're know if we can incredible. show that image again that we showed a little bit earlier yeah. on. Um, the fairy, the, butter, butter the butterfly fae. fae. So we can really appreciate the detail in this yeah. one and then it, it'll give everybody a clue at home as to the area that I'm filling in as well. Yeah, look at this. Oh, yeah, that's the skirty bits, like... It's like yeah. a fluted bluebell, isn't it? It's just incredible. Oh, I did say I'd got a secret with this one, didn't I? Oh, I you might did. have to take this out I thought that's what you were doing. I thought going with it. Oh. I that's why we're only doing the body. But, you oh, see, I've the already I've got a spare... I've got so many things with resin in it at the minute, you see. <laughs> no, it's got my resin in the other one. I've only got two of each moulds. So one's for clay and one's for resin. So if my resin's curing, I can't use it. Now, I did pour resin this morning. I got up early to pour resin hoping that I could demold live on air. Yeah. I know a couple of them I'm likely to be able to get out, and the others, I think, they're still a little bit tacky to be able to remove from the mould. Might be ready for 8 o'clock. Well, that's OK, then. Well, if then not, we'll it'll tomorrow. be tomorrow morning. But, yeah, that's if we've got any stock left. Well, <laughs> yes, it could, yeah, we could be just having a lovely chat like loose women. I do apologise, we're still working on the gremlins, and... Please don't give up. Please don't give up on your basket and the product and uh, the fact that you want it. We'll let you know as soon as, soon as we can when we're, we're up and running. I don't really know what that means for your basket and the product, but we'll just keep you updated. I don't know. I don't know if it's booted them out and they have to boot back in or... <laughs>
Nobody <laughs> knows. I don't know. But I'll, I'll keep oh, you posted with my non-information oh. as much as I can. Oh, there must be some very frustrated people well, out there. Well, when we wait so long, it is, and we yeah. get it. And I'm so sorry. OK, right. Well, what I'm going to do, I, these little twiddly bits here, rather than standing here, because we can't be doing recaps and things uh, with, <laughs> with the broken websites, I don't want you to be spending too much time just watching me sort of fiddling about with this. So I'll do one side, and I'll come back and do that a little bit later on, because this is a two-part demonstration. Okay. But this clay here, I've gone into the main body mm. of our lovely butterfly, where you've got the very small detail. And it's rare I do this again. I normally just work with fingertips. Do find a tool, a, nothing sharp. It's got to be a round-ended tool. Oh, yeah. Doesn't matter if you open up the silicon a little bit, but you want to make sure that you really squash yeah. down that clay to pick up all of the detail. And you can see now on that one there where I've been, you can see I Isn't now it? need to top that yeah. up. So, you know, you've got to make sure you really compact this down. The reason I can't go over the top with the rolling pin with this one at the moment anyway is because I'm not filling the entire mould. Mm. I did say, didn't I, there are odd occasions where I change the rules. Mm. The reason I'm not going to fill this completely with clay is because I'm going to let that set for a little bit mm -hmm. and then I'm going to go with resin. Clear Ooh, resin, so mold, that the wings half are resin, clear. Half clay. Yeah, <gasps> we might put some sparkle Ooh, in the wings ethereal, as well. Oh, I like that wings. I get it. So oh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave that for now. That clay is not going to dry anytime soon. Yeah. Okay. At oh, eight yes, o'clock, it takes longer. Yeah. We're going to put the resin in the wings. Mm -hmm. I've shown you how the clay cures and what you can do with it. We'll 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 see that being coloured up. Yeah. Um, at another point, but we'll come back to that because I've got more to show you. And I do want to get onto the resin as well, because I know we've got the resin available again. Yeah. And how should so, we store that clay? Like, like our air dryer? Uh, you need, it, because it's an air dry polymer, you really need to keep this properly airtight yeah. because it will start to dry out. So I'm, for now, <laughs> just going to put it in a little plastic bag and not do a very good job of it. But at home, do not waste that clay. Make sure you really seal it tightly. OK, so we've done air dry clay, we've done the air dry polymer. What about the resin? Oh, yes, please. Now, we do have the resin available. Do we have the resitant? I hope we do, because I've... Yes, we do. Brilliant, because I've used the resitant quite a lot. <laughs> if oh. I bring this one in, this is a part... a part done demonstration. See, there's a little bit of colour. I was just playing with a, a colour I got at home. I often say to people, whether it's air dry clay, resin or whatever it is, if it is a character that's got skin tones, regardless of what skin tone it is, that is the hardest colour to paint. Mm. Other colours, not a problem. Yeah. I've seen so many people, or people have sent me pictures, where they've been painting beautiful castings and then they've gone to paint the faces and the arms and things in and they've completely ruined it because oh. the colours are so yeah. wrong. So I tend to mix those skin tones and cast with those colours. Ooh. If it was air dry clay, I would mix that clay colour. Right. So we'll probably look at that tomorrow. This time it's the resin. Now the resin is the Alichem that we've got. Now we've got the total cast on the show. You've seen Alichem shows here, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. we've, we often see total cast on the, the clay shows and on the mould shows, I should say. And uh, I'm trying to think of the name of the other one. There's another one that we often see when we do the sort of resin mixes and things when Scott comes to see us. They're both resins, they're both working the same way. They're both one part mix, one part the other, but the total cast that I have for the moulds mm -hmm. is a little bit more flexible. In what way? And this is why I like it, because <laughs> it will cure, it will go really solid. Yeah. But this is why I was trying to time this today. When you pour this into your moulds, after about six to eight hours, yeah. depending on the temperature, and you demould, it is very, very malleable. Now, I did say I've got some ready. I'm going to come back to that in a second. I have to keep testing these because they're, they're so close to being ready, ready to demould. Yeah. Right, I've got the treehouse. This one looks like it's going to work. I did this this morning, and I'm going to show you how to mix this. This is the Elichem with the Resitint in, in the black. Mm. Okay. Now, you can tell when you can demold, de uh, de because let me get one that I know is not going to work very well, which is this one here. What should be all right now? Right. Can you see as I'm just flexing that? It's mm. not going anywhere. It's staying in the mould. Mm. Doesn't it's want not to lifting. release, does it? No. So I know it's not set enough. Ah. If you add the resitant, it will make the curing time a little bit longer. Right. Although saying that, this one has got resitant in it as well, but I did pour this one before morning, the yeah. one I've got there. So now you can see as I flex the mould, it's starting to lift. So I'm just going to peel this away. 
And you can see how malleable this actually is. Don't worry if you get a little bit of resin on top of the mould, that will come away afterwards. There we've got, let me hold this to camera one, you can see how flexible this still is. Oh, but wow. look at the detail in that. <laughs> Okay. Now, if you do get any little bits that have, have gone over the top of the mould, because it can be difficult, you will be able to just remove those. So there's one there. There's another one just at the side of that tree there. Look, so if I just pull that away. Use a pair of scissors if you need. Yeah. It wants tidying up a little bit more, but you can see how that comes away easily. But look how malleable this is. Oh, yeah. It's got a, bit, a good bit of flex in there, isn't it? Yeah. So if I've got, I'll just bring in, let me just bring in this pot. This is where, if you're using a vase or something, you can really sort of work that to the shape. Ooh, yeah. So I would use, in this case, I would use probably a heavy uh, body gel medium, mm -hmm. and I would wrap around some cling film oh, to, to hold, hold that in position. In and, yeah. yeah. You're not going to damage the detail because it's yeah. there and yeah. it's cured enough to keep the detail. Right. But it will keep that nicely tight to whatever you're shaping it around, mm -hmm. and then when it's fully cured that will keep its shape perfectly. Oh, fantastic. Okay. That's fantastic. Now I've yeah. got another one that I have cured much longer so exactly the same mold so we can see the very malleable one this one now is not Set. really stretching yeah right you can hear it can't you can you? hear yeah. it yeah. so that was done quite some that was done i think that was prepped for january as well so that's how long that one has been ready so that's the difference with the resins but there's i've been playing with some little tricks Ooh. so one of them is the butterfly fay which we're going to put the clear wings in um, there's the the skin tone one, which I'm going to come back to that I've just been describing. But there's also something else that I've been doing as well. I have my eye on this. this have you? Let me find. I wanted to know how you did this. I thought this looked beautiful. Right. If we <gasps> look at this one, I, do you know, I, I was really quite pleased with this. This is all done with resin. Wow. She looks amazing. The butterfly. She lady. does, doesn't she? But we've got an image of her. Actually, we're going to show it. I think there it is. Write down now the code the, number if you. Sorry, Kaz. Write sorry. down the code number if you want to, so that you you know you have it. So when we can, you know, check it, check you out on the website, you've got it. Sorry, Catherine. That's fine. So this has been done entirely with resin. There is absolutely no paint on there. There's no other form of colouring. It is all resin. Now I don't know if anybody's ever done this before, but I was playing. I certainly hadn't until prior to this show. So I'm going to bring. I'll use the same mould uh, because it's one that I've got spare. <laughs> because the butterfly fay, I need her for later. So we are going to mix the resin. Now I'm going to suggest that you wear gloves for this, not because it's toxic or it's going to hurt you, it's, um, it's the fact that it's very sticky. Oh, okay. So if you get it on your skin, it doesn't just wash off with soap and water that easily. It takes a little bit of scrubbing. The best thing to clean up with is the, the alcohol um, hand, yeah. hand gels. Oh. Yeah. It brings it off. In fact, that's good for all sorts of things. Have you ever oh, seen the alcohol wipes and things for cleaning yeah, up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because they get all the grubbiness off and the oh. stains and things. Oh, so, yeah, that's to, a good uh, tip if you do get it on. That's a great top skin. tip there, Catherine. We've got it on the screen now for the Elikem Total Class Clear. This is the, uh, the, the 500 gram there, 851436, £27.60. Or if you want any more, the two kilogram we've got as well. And we'll get those details up while Catherine's uh, showing us. £2904888.76. That's for two kilograms there lovely okay now i know we don't sell these but these are easy to get hold of i tend to mix in these silicon jugs because they're so easy to clean out when the resin is dried in them you just flex them and all the bits fall out if you're using plastic you can use it for so long and then you're going to throw it away and yeah. we're trying to cut down on plastic so it's a good idea now I, I, actually while i'm talking about this i know we're not selling them but i did have a message from someone saying oh i find them a little bit flimsy they are, but if you put two together, I don't know if I can, you have to kind of squash one into the other a little bit and then they'll start, kind of open out again. Yeah. You can put two together to sort of firm that up if you find it a little yeah. bit flexible. Or put that into another pot yeah. to give it rigidity yeah. on the outside. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm going to pop that on my scales, set the scales to naught because that's important because I've got one part of uh, resin to one part hardener. You will get different colour lids, at least you do on the larger ones, and they, do, they are clearly marked as well. So resin on this one, and this is the hardener here. You can You've clearly see there, on the label. Yeah. yeah. Well, I go through an awful lot of this. <laughs> <laughs> we can split that over two flexi by payments as yeah. well. So this is a very, very quick one to mix actually because it is one part one one part the other now i'm going to put some resident into this i'm just going to uh ooh, how much shall i go with it? i'm going to go with 35 of the resin or thereabouts let's see if i can get it accurate 
There we are. There, we've got 35 there. Now, it, this is why it's important to make sure your scales are at naught because otherwise that little jug would weigh something and I don't want to mm. count that in. Gotcha. So the hardener now needs to match. So I'm going to take the scales to 70. Or I could have gone back to naught on the scales and started again at 35, but I, I like to keep my brain busy. I like to do the maths. Equal so, parts, did you say, Catherine? Yeah, equal yeah. parts. This is the tricky bit, but can you see how fine you can actually pour this mm. if, you, if you're very careful? If you go over by the slightest, slightest little bit, I wouldn't worry too much. But if you're mixing tiny, tiny amounts, then it's going to matter more if yeah. you're out, of course. The more you mix... Oh, I'm getting close now. This is the nervous bit. 68. <laughs> yeah. I need 70. We've got, oh. we've got the whoppers there. Two flexi fire payments of £39.48 for the two kilograms of... Oh, the come on. So sorry, we're still experiencing website issues. Write down your oh. item number, bear with us. There we are. I promise you it'll be worth it in the end. Right. I promise you. We've got 70. We've got 70 in there. Now, there's a couple of things I could do here. I'm going to mm -hmm. mix it, of course, first. Mm -hmm. I could either use this as a clear resin and pour into a mould. Yeah. For one mould. If you want to mix enough to do more than one, you certainly can. And then I could put some resin tint in if I just want a small amount. But I'm actually going to put white into all of this because I'm, I'm going to probably pour into a couple of different moulds. So I've got 70 millilitres or 70 grams, actually. Um, now, at home, I would say use a, a plastic spoon or something. Don't use metal, don't use wood because you won't clean the resin off wood. It will stick to it. Right. Plastic, you can sort of flake it away. I'm using the end of an old paintbrush. I just find it very easy to do that. And I'm going quite fast, simply because it's a time thing here, oh. demonstrating. At home, I would say take it a little bit more steadily, mm -hmm. almost fold that together, simply because you are putting bubbles in there. Now, I can't take this too much, but, oh. I'm, well, the overhead might see it. I don't know. See, we can see from the overhead. No, we can't get it from the overhead. Right. Can you see in there? It's gone a little bit less clear now. Yeah. And it, there's lots and lots of bubbles well, in there. Yeah. Now, I'm making them because I'm really stirring that fast. You want to give this a stir somewhere between two to three minutes. OK, play it okay. safe. Go for three minutes. I'm not because, again, time. I've never actually had an issue with this on air. It's always set anyway. But you at home, do you know, you don't want to waste this. So no. do it carefully. No. Now, I've purposely gone quite fast and got the bubbles in there as well, because there's a few other things I want to explain of how to avoid or how to get rid of some bubbles as well. Mm. Now, I don't want to put that down on there. I'm using, I should have brought in John's silicone mat. It's at the side of me. If you work on silicone rather than glass, you'll find it cleans up easier as well. Mm -hmm. Now, the resi tint, do we still have the option with the resi tint in it? Our lovely producer, Katie. There is one, I think you get the black and the white. Yeah, that's a lovely kit to go for. If you've never had the resin before, you get the black and the white resi tint. Oh, no, not that one. That's the high bill. That's a completely different resin. Do we not have it? Right. Resi tint, I think we have as a pick and mix online then. Oh, okay. I did think it was on the show, but we'll see. Right, okay. So resi tint, you only need a tiny bit. And you think mixing a little bit of white into a clear liquid isn't going to make much difference, but actually it does. Ooh. So I've just picked up a little bit on my paintbrush. You could use a cocktail stick, you could use the end of a spoon. Wow, that changed quickly, didn't it? It really that does tiny change. Little yeah. And you can mix the colours Gosh. together as well, so you can make your own colours up. So what I'm doing here, I'm mixing the white, just thoroughly stirring that in. If you find you've got a lot of bubbles, what you can do is put some... Um, oh, we have got that resin, I oh, believe. Oh, great. Katie's yes, I'm intrigued it. by it. Oh, there we go. It's a really got good colours. one to go for. Resitint acrylic ink. You get them in the little pipette bottles there. Ah, uh, actually, no, these no. are different again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right, this one... Can we use with our other clay? This one just... you can use with our... Medina. ...crackle oh. that we've got on the show. Oh, we'll, we're not we'll looking crackle. at that tonight, but tomorrow we'll leave me we will. hanging with yeah, that one. We'll see that tomorrow. Okay. The resitin, I'm sure it's there somewhere. This is what it looks like. It comes in all different colours. Check the website for Ellie yeah. see if you can we find it. We can't find it. it. it must okay. be somewhere. If it's not there, I'm going to see if we can get it on. Okay. What day is it today? Yes, we, hopefully Thursday. we can get it on. Um, we'll try and get it on for tomorrow because it's really quite important. 
So what I'm going to do now, because I've got the white, oh, I was saying, yeah, get some warm water, not yeah. hot, not boiling hot, not cold, just tepid water mm. or warm water. Stand your little jug in yeah. there and it will help disperse the bubbles. Bubbles. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. There is something new else you can do as well, and yeah. I am dipping my finger in here. So oh, make sure you've got gloves on to do this. You can also apply a thin layer of resin into your mould yeah. before pouring the rest in there, and that will also avoid getting so many bubbles That's in there. There's still that. another tip I'm going to come up with, but what Fantastic. I'm going to do because I want to show you how to get the effect on that lovely butterfly lady. Oh yes, All I she did, was white, but yeah. edging on her. All I did, I took my finger. Mm. And I really just sort of rubbed this into the mould. See, if you do this with a paintbrush, you'll ruin your paintbrushes and you can't get it into all those crevices oh. in exactly the same way. Uh, and me being me, Fiona, I do like to show you the things that go wrong as well. And I have got one that I did at home, which I was really <laughs> excited about. But I'm an impatient crafter. <laughs> I will show it you. And I ruined it and oh. I'm gutted gutted it's not the end of the world because i can still do something with it but i will explain when i show you well, that's why okay, i ruined cause, it because then you save us from all the pitfalls <laughs> yeah <laughs> so all i'm doing here is really sort of rubbing that into the detail and you can start to see that detail coming through so where we've got the pattern in the dress where we've got the folds where we've got the face where there's deep areas of the hair that silicon is sitting in there Okay, and that is all I would do to begin with, and I would let that sort of cure. Oh. So I'd give that, depends on the temperature again, I would give that a few hours to cure, and then all I need to do then is pour over clear resin. Will you show us the end one Or again? a different colour resin. Yeah. I will. Let me bring in... She's where rather I, I think she, she looks like Titania having a go at Oberon. Let so me I've get a dark she is. background to put this She's on. She's rather spectacular. Look at that. We have got an image of this one as well. <gasps> so all that is... Is the white as I've just rubbed it into yeah, the mould. So let that harden a little bit. Mm. Gone over the top with the clear resin. So any of the colours that we could have done that with. You could do that with any colour you want. Oh, that's amazing. Now something else that's important to tell you about these moulds as well is, and we get this question all of the time. If you put clear resin into these moulds, because they're a matte finish, you will get almost a frosted look. Mm. And that's why you can see that frostiness yes. with the white here. Right. But there is a way that you can create the resin to look totally clear as well. Ooh. I have shown it before, and we will cover it again during the one-day special. Great so stuff. bear with me on that. I'm trying to get as many hints and tips as I can in. So that is simply all I need to do there. Now, I did Love. promise I'd show you the one that went wrong. Go on, then. Fess up. Well, when I did the Butterfly Fae with the skin tone, I thought, do you know what, I'm going to... I've got to use that colour into my butterfly lady so she's got a lovely sort of skin tone face. Sounds reasonable. Me being an impatient crafter, before I put the other resin in, which is this particular colour, this right. sort of aqua colour, I took it out of the mould just to see if it had picked up the detail properly, which it had, it was perfect. Oh. Popped it back in the mould, poured the colour over the top, but because I'd removed it from the mould beforehand, the colour got underneath. Oh. So this happened. Oh, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hold it to camera one. Well, so I've lost. She's now got a blue I face, but well. actually, I, I quite, quite like, like it. her. Yeah. And all is she's not lost down. because if I want to paint over that, I can. But I absolutely I think she's love. rather spectacular myself. I love the effect in the wing and the dress. Yeah. It's exactly what I wanted, but the blue got underneath I the see. resin where I'd released it from the mould where her face was. It looks like the crimson Be sunset patient. is just shining on her. Do not take out the resin, the first coat of resin, before you pour on the top coat. Otherwise, that will happen. I tell you what, I'll give you a moment <laughs> to breathe there, Catherine. Fantastic demonstrations. If you've got any questions, obviously, regarding the moles, then do let us know, because this is the one-day special. And can I apologise again? We know the website's crashed. Write down the item number. We will be back up and running. That's exactly what we're trying to do right now. So we're doing everything we can to get that website up and running so you can get these uh, fantastic products. So let's have a look how we can spread the cost of our payments with FlexiBuy. Flexi order has arrived at Hachanda. What is Flexi order? When you place an item on Flexi Buy in your basket, you qualify for Flexi order. 
which means any other items you add to your basket will also be included in your FlexiBuy payments, so you can spread the cost over multiple monthly payments. After your first payment is made, your entire order will be dispatched. When you add at least £60 worth of any items to your shopping basket, either online or on the phone, you'll qualify for our Flexi Order offer. This means you can spread the cost of your order over equal monthly FlexiBuy payments, offering you the extra flexibility when you shop with us. Flexi Order, making your shopping experience with Achanda easier. OK, we've got some beautiful moles on the show, which we know you want to buy, so we're sorting out that website. But we'll still carry on with a fantastic demonstration so that when we're up and running, if you could just write down that order number and then you can grab and go when everything has got the green light. So, Catherine, back to you, my darling. OK, right. The, I did do a technique with the minstrel as well, but this one is not ready to demold. So okay. maybe at 8 o'clock we'll have a look at that one because Lovely. there are more than one colour in this one as well. Ooh. So we'll come back to that at 8. Gorgeous. But I've got the minstrel here. Minstrel here. Uh, I've actually dusted this because it's resin again. I've got the white that I mixed. Oh, yeah. And just to show you a few other techniques as well, I have used... This is Resitint Max, I believe. This is the powder. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful. But if you've got mica powders, you can use those as well. Dust them into your mould. Oh. You can also mix... If you go for the Elechem one, you could actually mix that... Straight in. Straight into the resin as well. And because what kind I've got of... the white in there, I don't really need to do this. But do you know what? I'm going to put some in anyway. What kind of effect does it... Does it, does it colour it all well, through? Well, it's very very metallic so you will oh. get that metallic finish it might show up better it, look at that oh it's like oh actually I don't, really, I, don't, I don't want to mix that right in i want no, that swirly well, yes, i quite like the swirly swirly joe because the website's down should we just play oh, and yes, see what we get okay so we've we've i've dusted with the resident there or mm. the mica we'll just say mica because you may not have that and i'm going to use the rest of the white that i mix that's now got a little bit of that uh powder mix into it as well I'm just going to pour this all into the mold now because I've put the color in here I've still got some spur there uh, because I've got the color in here you're not really picking up the bubbles but there will be lots of bubbles in there right. now one or two tips again this one's actually not too bad but if you get something like the butterfly fair where you've got those really tiny bits of detail mm. there are areas that you will find are likely to trap the air bubbles right. so what i tend to do is use a cocktail stick or the end of a paintbrush and just sort of help coax it in poke those around you know give, the, give them a little a a little stab with a cocktail stick. In fact, yeah. there was one there. I don't know if you picked it up on the camera. Yes. You'll see. You'll see more as I work with this. I can see one or two bubbles popping right now. I don't know if you can at home. You might be able to see the uh, mica sort of fizzing a little bit as well. I don't know if I keep that still. Can you see on the camera? Just watch. You might see. Oh, I can see. I just saw one did pop. You? Yes, I did. Okay, right. Hopefully, when I get the heat gun on this, this oh, is another one. <laughs> It's really good fun to watch, actually. <laughs> yeah, Stop I can see them going all the time. Mm. So, heat gun. Now, some people say don't use your heat guns with your moulds because it will ruin them. These moulds will take up to 270 degrees centigrade. These will mm -hmm. go in the oven. So if you've got the oven-baked polymer, you can put that into the moulds and bake it in the oven already in the mould. So it's amazing. Yeah. You can put biscuit mixing, the food grade. Obviously, don't mix the two, have a separate no. set for your food. Um, a heat gun, I've checked this with the WOW heat gun, which I've got here, on the highest setting, it's about 230 degrees. Right. At its hottest. Yeah. These will take up to 270 Ooh. and go in an oven. Yeah. So a little blast with heat is not going to hurt. Now, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to just work this over the surface. I can still see those bubbles popping, but hopefully you'll see even more go. So I'll just warm this up a little bit. And all those instructions about the, the product, about the, them being used oh. with the clays and the different temperatures, the, you know, microwave, refrigerator, freezer safe, up to 464 yeah. degrees Fahrenheit. It's all on the back of the, uh, the instructions of the mould. Yeah. Well. yeah. There's so much help out there as well. I mean, you can message me on Facebook or email me. There's the design team. There's an air bubble just in the feather there that's just popped. And hopefully you got to see it. I mean, again, I think you are picking up on the camera, but I'm seeing probably a lot more than you're seeing at home. It's quite interesting how that resident is also moving there because, yeah. of course, I am moving things around a little bit. 
Now, what happens with the heat as well, it makes the resin go a little bit more liquefied mm, as well, yes, so it nice. will have that movement. Now, I don't really need to do it with here, but something else that I, I really like about the, the Zuri moulds is that because they're so solid, it's such a good silicon, and it's so solid, it's not floppy and flimsy, mm. you can actually lift these up and tap them. So quite often, lifting up and Ooh. dropping will also help bring those air bubbles to the surface. Great. So go with a film of resin first with a fingertip on your glove. Mm -hmm. Put a thin layer of resin, then pour the resin. That will stop a lot of air bubbles. Use the heat gun, pick it up, drop it down, warm up your resin first. There's all those different tips. They all work. Yeah. You don't have to use them all in one go, but they all work. Great. You may find that you'd get the odd bubble that just won't go away because there's little trapped areas, you know, with so much detail in there. To be quite honest, it doesn't bother me, and I quite like to see <laughs> them sometimes, depending on the mould. But, you know, we'll leave that one to set as well. That will not be ready tonight. That will be ready tomorrow, and we'll, uh, we'll demould that tomorrow morning, hopefully. Here's one that I did earlier. Again, this is resin. That is the exact same resin with the resitant in it, the white resitant ah, in there. Ah, that looks so lovely. It's like alabaster. It really doesn't it beautiful? Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Do you know, I love it as it is, but obviously throughout the shows I will show you how to bring the detail out more with your colours and your paints as well. Let me show that to camera one actually, so we can really appreciate how how nice this is. Oh, that's Look amazing, at this. isn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Stunning. It really is. Yeah. Love it love it so we've got lots of things drying we've got lots of things sort of part made we've got things that are going to be ready tomorrow as well at eight o'clock tonight um we will be working more with our butterfly fay remember she's half air dry polymer but she's gonna have wet res resin wings and i'm gonna yeah. mix something into the resin to create those wings as well lovely we will come back to this one because I want to talk to you about the skin tones, both in the clay and the resin as well. Mm. So we'll come back to that. And hopefully we might be able to demould one or two more pieces that I created this morning as well. Fabulous. I say, let's have a look at some more inspiration. So, oh, look, there's the elephant. Now we might, we might have our elephant only because a lot bounced out. We're very sorry because we know you wanted him. We're working on it. If you can, while we're off air as well, um, obviously we're with Adam and Karen for the next hour, but in between this and our eight o'clock, if you can just keep abreast of the situation, that would be brilliant. And uh, we, can, we can bring you it all again, again at eight o'clock. But uh, this is some of the design team that Catherine mentioned earlier in terms of those new, new Zuri moles that you've been waiting for for so long. I tell you what, those, those, that fairy, that tree house, I mean, it looks so different with that color colour combinations there, doesn't it, Catherine? Amazing. It really does. If we've got a minute or so at the end of the show, I'll bring some colour out of the tree house. Yeah. Lovely. I've got to say a big thank you again to the design team for these wonderful images. Gorgeous. All the way from America, most of them as well. We've got Sylvia in the UK and of course we've got we've got Creo, I believe, is in the Netherlands. We've got Gosh. Nelly, we've got Lynette and we've got Nicole in America as well. And of course, can't not finish without mentioning Sophie and Michael, of course, are the owners of Zuri. Oh, of course, absolutely. Who are also in America. Yeah, hats off to them as well. So, uh, well, we've got about three minutes left. Um, do you want to do a bit of colouring then? OK, right? yeah. Just while we're waiting. Well, I've got, I've got the black resin casting from the treehouse. And I did say so many people send in messages each time they see the shows and they see the packaging images, which is the black with that beautiful detail. And if you want to recreate just that sort of image, you can mm. do very easily. It is gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. So you could do this with your air dry clay as well, but I would go for the black hearty clay straight into the mould. As okay. soon as it's dry, you can do exactly what I'm going to do now. This one is resin. Um, I've got this. Is, I don't think this is a true silver. I forget the name of this. This is the Viva Decor, but any of your waxes would work. There are times I use paint brushes to brush on the colour if I'm doing lots of different colours. But with this one, just to bring out that detail, just look at this. Can you use your look sort of gilding waxes, Catherine? Sort you can use ones. gilding waxes. Yeah. The Viva ones are water based because you can paint oh, with them, yeah. you can do so many different things. Now, I do tend to sort of tap off my fingertip a little bit because if you have too much on there, you might just sort of go into all those grooves. But look at this, how oh, it's coming together. That's a life, doesn't it? There is nothing more satisfying than just <laughs> having a plain coloured cast. Yeah. And then just bring in that detail, and that's just with one colour. Now, if you haven't got waxes or you can't get hold of the waxes, we do have Eva Decor on on uh, Monday, but I'm not sure the waxes are on. 
Um, I've been given some new product, but I don't know if any of the old products are, we'll see. That's but if you haven't got the waxes, you can dry brush with your paints as well. So I will show that throughout the shows. So I'm trying to cover every opportunity for everybody with things that they've already got or if they're looking to purchase, you know, they can go for different different selections of mediums because they will work. I mean, look at that. How quick was that, Fiona? Amazing. And it's transformed, it, hasn't it? It's what, beautiful, isn't it? Detail. I don't want to do anything else to that, actually. No, that's I did think, shall I put other colours in there? But actually, no. Look at that. That looks so good. So that's answered that question. How do we achieve that that fantastic image that you see on the on the packaging? Incredible. Uh, thank you, Catherine. I look forward to our eight o'clock show together. Um, we are endeavouring to fix the website, and uh, we do apologise profusely. We know what's been going on. This has gone on for a little bit longer than we'd had hoped, but uh, bear with us. Write down any, any items that you do want. Write down the codes, and of course. <clears throat> There are people in the call centre, but we realise the phone lines are busy as well. So please bear with us. We will be back at eight. Fingers crossed everything will be fixed now. Anyway, because we've got more entertainment for you and fantastic products. We've got the lovely Karen and Adam coming up for the next hour. So we are aware of the problem. And as soon as it's fixed, we will let you know. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you. We do it See again you at eight. eight. Let's do that. Fingers crossed.